Tusk 2-1, two Tusk 2-2, two two, radio check. 2-1, two copy you, Lima Charlie. Hey, go ahead and drop the canopy for me so you can hear me a little bit better. This is going to be the uh, silver switch near the bottom right corner of the front dash. Let me know when you have that down and locked. Okay, sir. Canopy is down and locked. Alright, man. Let's either go with one lead or my call sign Biff while we're in the pit. Cool? No more of that sir shit. Copy that, sir. Shit. Shit. One. Copy that one. So today's sortie is going to be short and sweet. We're going to go over taxi, takeoff, landing, and shutdown together. I'm going to act as flight lead even though I'll be following you around. So I'm going to handle all communications and clearances through ATC for the flight. Copy? Um, okay. Anything I should be aware of or know leading us around Vegas? Just stick to the flight plan and everything will be cool. Roger that. Expected to know how to start the jet unassisted. However, I like to offer us going through it step by step to folks on their first sortie. It gives us a chance to break the ice on something low threat before we're even out of the chalk. If you're happy to just press, that's fine too. Let me know what you want to do. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go through it together. Alright, I'm going to pick up the checklist after the pre-flight and cockpit and prior to engine start section. After I give you a few commands, let me know when you've accomplished those instructions and we'll move on. Raj? All right, obviously our uniform radio battery and inverter are up, so we're gonna move over to the left console. There you're gonna find the radar altimeter. Set that switch into the NRM or normal position. That switch is gonna be located just behind the throttle. While we're over there, we're also going to move the main boost pump switches into the main position and the wing boost pumps into the wing position. Those switches can be found on the panel just ahead of the throttle and up against the dash. Let me know when you have all of that done. Set. Top left corner of the heads up display, on the canopy framing, you will find the accelerometer. I need you to press and hold the accelerometer reset button found in the bottom left corner to zero out our G. Next, on the right console, locate the electrical panel and set both AC generator switches to the power position. Set. Under the CDU, which is behind the electrical panel, I need you to verify that the page select rotary knob is in other, and the steer point knob is set to mission. Since we're over there, also go ahead and set your oxygen supply lever to on, and your navigation lights into the flash position. I forgot to mention, but on the left throttle, you need to put the into the aft position, that way all of your exterior lights are working. Okay, all that is done. Cool, now we need to check out all of our caution lights. So, back on the left console, just ahead of the staff find two buttons. One of those is going to be labeled signal light lamp test, and the other one is going to be fire detect bleed air leak test. So let's go ahead, press, and hold the fire detect bleed air leak test one. While we're holding that, we're going to scan the dash, looking at the fire handles, making sure they illuminate, and on the master caution panel, we should see bleed air leak flashing. 
Okay, that's good. Form is you show three green landing gear lights next to the lollipop or landing gear handle. Three green. On. Uh, I need you to locate that signal light test button. It's going to be next to the button that you just pressed. Here, we're going to hold it down and look over a little bit more of the cockpit this time as we have it held down. So go ahead and do that. Before we start the motor. But for 
now. Two's up 
on 289.4. Get our IFR clearance from them for every sortie that we fly. Again, I'll handle it this time, but in the future, when you're flying at least, you'll get the clearance. Stand by for the call. Engine one is up and good. All right, so now we need to cycle the flight controls. Um, we're going to look for free and correct movement. Uh, so go ahead and move your ailerons, elevators, and rudders. If that's good, go ahead and start your number two engine in the same way you did. 
located at number one and let me know when you have a good start. Copy, you stand by. Both engines are up. All right, so going back to the oxygen stuff on the environmental panel, uh, we're going to make sure that the emergency and diluter levels are in their normal position. Supply lever is on and the flow indicator is working. All that is good. Here in the checklist is where we normally get the radios on the set, but we've already done that. So the next thing to do is going to get the IFF into standby. If you have followed your checklist before we got the uniform radio up, you should have already got the IFF panel set. But just to be sure, we're going to go all over it together. Roger, standing by. So on the IFF panel, just outboard and behind the throttle, place the code dial in. Alpha, next set our mode 3 code as 4010, as this is what we are going to be squawking today. Okay, Alpha set. Mode C on and 4010 is dialed up. Okay, that should cover what should have been set up beforehand. Um, oh, aside from moving the IFS antenna switch into the boat find that as the furthest left rear switch on the left console. Um, now getting back to where we were in before taxi, uh, move the master mode dial into the standby position. Okay, standby set. So we're going to go ahead and move on to making sure that the cross off position. You will find the crossfeed switch on the fuel system control panel. Set. And just to the left of that, we're going to make sure that the emergency brake handle is in the full forward position. Back onto the right console, you will find the ILS and TAC and control panel. Set your TAC and mode selector switch to TR and turn the ILS on by moving the left bezel into the power position. Also set your TAC and for 12 X ray and dial into 109.10 on the ILS. Okay, all set. 
Okay, so now we need to check the signal lights one more time, just like we did before, looking for all the bright flashing lights and the noise coming through the helmet. After we're done with that, we're going to cycle the flaps through their full range of movement. First, we'll drop them one notch down into the takeoff position, then we will go full down. After they stop moving, we'll bring them all the way back in. Lamps and flaps are good. We're now going to test the speed brake emergency retract. There are several things that need to happen either at the same time or very close together. So to make this a little bit easier, I will explain the whole process first, then we will go through it step by step. How does that sound? Copy. Sounds great. Again, this is just going to be a quick description as to what we're going to do, so don't press any buttons right now. So the first step is going to be locating the speed brake emergency retract switch on the yellow and black outlined emergency flight control panel. On that panel in the upper left corner, you will find that switch. What you're going to do is hold open the speed brake switch on the throttle in the open position. As the boards are opening, you are going to throw that switch forward into the speed brake emergency retract position while still holding the open command on the throttle. Okay, while still holding the switch open, you should see the speed brake stop in their movement. Uh, you're going to release the switch on the throttle and try to close them. They should not move. At that time, return the emergency retract switch into its original unmarked position and slightly close the speed brake. Uh, after you slightly close them, you're going to fully open them. While they are fully open, cycle the ailerons while checking full free and correct movement. If that's all good, fully close the speed brake and check for proper hydraulic pressure. Easy peasy, right? I think so. Okay, it's hold open the throttle speed brake switch and flip the emergency retract, which should stop them. Try to close them, which shouldn't work and return the emergency retract switch, then slightly close and full open on the boards. Check for movement, then close and check hydro pressure. Right? That's it, man. Uh, so go ahead and give it a shot this time while I read you through it. Sound good? Yep. Ready to proceed. Okay, here we go. While commanding open on the speed brakes, flip the emergency retract switch into the emergency retract position. While still holding open, verify that the boards have stopped in their movement. Now try and close them. Again, they should not move. Check. No movement. All right, now return the emergency retract switch into its original unmarked position. Slightly close the speed brakes, then stop them. Now go ahead and fully open the speed brakes. Open, cycle the ailerons looking for free and correct movement. And after you've done that, fully close the boards, do a quick check of the control surface movement, and then have a look at your hydraulic pressure to make sure it's good, and that's it. Okay, everything worked as designed, and pressures are good, I think. Normal pressure is anywhere between 2800 and 3350 psi, correct? Anti-skid, and engage the four SAS 
channel switches near the throttle. Do that now, please. Okay, anti-skid on and SAS switches in the up position. Cool, so here we're gonna move the monitor test switch, bound just underneath the four channel switches towards the left. When we do this, we should see the four SAS switches get kicked back into their off position. Re-engage all four channels and push the switch to the right, again looking for SAS to get kicked off again. So go ahead and do that now. Alright, both left and right are disengaged on all channels. Perfect, re-engage the four channels and leave them there. Next, go ahead and depress the takeoff trim button on the SAS panel until you see the light come on just above it. This, of course, indicates that your trim is neutralized. Okay, set. Alright, going back to the front dash underneath of the left MFCDE will find the AHCP, also known as the Armament Hood Control Panel. Here we need to put the FC switch into test and the GTRS and kick you switches both into their respective on positions. Also we're going to turn on both MFCDs and eventually these will default to the DTS upload page. Once that page is pulled up on either MFCD we're going to press OSB. Labeled load all, and this will start the DTS upload process. Stand by one. Okay, I just pressed load all. Okay, once you have pressed load all, you will see the asterisks next to everything disappear. Um, 15 seconds or thereabouts later, they will all reappear. This indicates that the ETC was successfully uploaded onto the jet. Copy. Okay, I see the asterisks are back, so the DTC is loaded. Now once that is done, we're going to find OSB on the right MFCD should be labeled STAT, and we're going to go through that and check for MFL. Okay, done. Cool, on the uh, left MFCD, press OSB 15 to bring up the TAD. And on the right MFCD, press OSB 13 to bring up the CDU repeater. Okay, done. Right on. The uh, INS alignment should now be finished, so if you would verify that you see 4.00.8 on the CDU towards the bottom next to where it says T equals. You should also see INS nav ready flashing at the top. Hey, firm. Okay, on the CDU, depress the right line select three key for nav. Then when you have done that, place the gear point rotary dial into the flight plan setting. Then on the nav mode select panel ahead of the joystick, press the Iggy button and verify the steer point button is illuminated as well.
flag to snow. We will then align the aircraft symbol to the horizon and it should be good. After you've done that, please verify that the vertical velocity and airspeed indicators both read zero. Good. Alright, next we're going to run the bit on the FC. So using the UFC, push the enter button and let it do its thing. Providing you have no grounding bit faults, let me know when you're ready and we will proceed to the next step. Copy, stand by. Alright, the bit is finished and we're good. Sweet, go ahead and move the IFC switch into the on position at this time, please. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Check. All right, now set your altimeter for two niner niner five. And first turn off the APU generator, then Repeat the 
process for all the frequencies that you want to find and for all of the radios. Oh, and if you're thinking where is the load button on the uniform, it's hidden under the load preset cover. Yeah, nothing has changed. Indeed. Okay, set the radios up as you'd like and let me know when you're done. Okay, set. Copy, stand by for taxi clearance. Two. Ground, test two, taxi two eight ten is with hotel from Thunder to zero three to the right. Test two, now listen, ground, taxi, Charlie, Golf, and Alpha, hold, short zero three right. Clear, Charlie, Golf, Alpha, hold, short zero three right, test two one. Okay, press the PT switch on the control column to activate your nose wheel steering. Also verify you see that illuminated on the front dash. After that, you'll need to advance the throttle slightly to get rolling, and once you're moving, don't forget to quickly apply and check the brakes. I'm going to follow you out to the active, take a left turn out of the shocks, and just follow the ramp. Just keep your taxi speed around 10 knots while we're on thunder. Oh, I forgot, but also switch your nav lights to steady and set your taxi landing lights into the taxi position. Two, taxi out. Alright, as you can see, Nellis is pretty busy and Thunder is a tight ram. You're going to want to really watch out around here for people, jammers, trucks, bobtails, trailers, cars, and bread vans like this guy off to the right. Raj? Yeah, those bread vans are especially bad. Air guys are always in a hurry, picking up and dropping off people, plus the expediters are going spot to spot checking on things. Just keep an eye out for them. Welcome. All right, we're coming up to the taxiway leading us out of Thunder. This is going to be taxiway Charlie. Follow it off to the left and continue straight. Two. When we taxi, we want to keep it around 15 knots, but certainly under 20. The nifty way we can check our ground speed is to press OSB 10 twice on the CDU page. Here you're going to see it switch from indicated airspeed to ground speed. Now to get it back to indicated, we simply hit OSB 10 once more. Very nice. Okay, here's Golf. Turn left now. We're going to follow this taxiway all the way down to the other end. Raj. Okay, off to our left, you're going to see the 
bomber pads in the revet. This is where they'll park bombers when they're TDY here, and they'll park aircraft loaded with lives in the revet. I think the last time I was here, they had shades over the revets. Yeah, they got blown over a few years back. I was here for that. It must have been like uh, 1700, and you've seen this wall of dust heading this way from the west. It's like something you see over in the shit. Yeah, I hit the base and knocked it over. We had a few A-10s under there and some Vipers loaded with 120s and 9s. They're here for a special half-cap mission. Damn, did anything bad happen? Well, there was some damage to the Hogs, the Vipers, and their missiles, but EOD came out and nothing went off. I think there may have been a few injuries to the maintenance guys and some equipment was damaged, but nothing much more. They just took the shade down and never put another one in. Oh, okay. Okay, we're approaching Alpha, so get ready to turn right and prepare to hold short for the runway until I can get us takeoff clearance. Two copies. Let me give ground a call and talk to contact tower at 327.70. Contact tower is 327.70, that's two. Okay, go to tower and monitor. We're going to hold here and pick it up in a second. Let me hit tower up. What was tower's frequency one more time, please? Tower is at 327.70. Raj? Alright, set. Tower, test two, hold short, zero three, right at alpha. Uh, hey. Hold on the active for some academics and delay departure for a few minutes. Plus two, Nellis Tower, runway three right, line up and wait. You've got a few minutes, advise we're ready for departure. Clear to enter and hold zero three right. We'll advise we're ready for takeoff, plus two. Before either of us enter the active, we need to quickly go through the before takeoff check. First, take a look at your engine instruments and make sure everything is good and in the green. Next, set your flaps for takeoff, verify your speed brakes are closed, put the IFF into the normal position, and verify the takeoff trim is set. Engine set, flaps good. Uh Engine's good and flat set. <laughs> Alright, verify that your oxygen is still good, canopy is down and locked, arm the rocket chair, turn on the strobe lights, and verify we are seeing indicated airspeed on the CDU. Good. Set and showing indicated airspeed. Go ahead, take the active, line up on the center line, and we'll run through the lineup check. Let me know when you're ready to press. Two. Two's lined up and holding. So 
Uh, first thing you're going to do is check your flight instruments. After that, check anti-skid, verify it's on. Pedo heat on. APU and APU generator off. Still with me? Yep, good so far. So you may have noticed that we're taking off with the wind. I know this is probably pretty odd for you, but here at Nellis, it's not too unusual to land and take off away from the city, providing the winds ain't too bad. Now we do this because of the noise and to reduce the risk of flying all those aircraft and even live munitions over a very heavily populated areas. Okay, let me get us takeoff clearance and we'll proceed with the next step. Stand by one. Two. Nellis, power tough two, holding zero three right.
kind of weird. Some spots are just dirt and rock. And then you drive 20 minutes in a car and there's some amazing scenery. Yep, just like any place that helps to know the area and what's out there to see and do. Since we're going to be here for a while at Nellis, I'll point out some of the nifty stuff as we fly around the area. Southwest of Mopa is turning inbound for landing. 
Down to the right, you can see the truck stop that approach was alluding to. This is a good landmark for getting into the pattern at Nellis. As we fly over it, we are 10 miles from runway 21. So for today, from here, I'm going to have you start a descent into Nellis and get set up for landing. So start down to pattern altitude, which is 3,400 feet MSL, and we're going to be looking for 180 knots indicated. As you do that, 
that, I'm gonna pick up in orbit here. Descending to 3400 and looking for 180 indicated. Solid copy. that frequency again? 
2, safe on deck. Just stay on the active until you're at the end of the runway. That's going to be taxiway alpha. Pull off a little bit and hold there. And... Raj?
contact. Plus two, vacate when able. Contact ground when clear of the active. Clear active when able and contact ground. Us two. Okay, let's head over to ground on 275.8. Okay, done. Perfect. POE off. Position light to bright and flash. Strobe off and pull the flaps in.
All right, one, ready for shutdown. Cool, looks like Chief has installed your chalk so you can go ahead and release the brake. Turn the IFF off, and next we're going to cage the standby attitude indicator by pulling the knob out and turning it at the same time. You should see the flag reappear and stay there when you release that knob. Next we'll go to the AHCP and verify the following. Master arm safe, gun pack safe, and laser arm safe. We're going to look for the TTP to be turned off. Yep, I'm still tracking. Okay, still on the AHCP. Uh, altitude source as desired. Kick you off. JTRS off. FC off. And both MFCDs off. That's going to be it for the AHCP. Next, go ahead to the CDU. Turn it off. And let me know when you're caught up. Okay, I'm all done with that. All right, so adjust the seat to the full up position, and if we're good on that five minutes below 80% core RPM, we can cut the engine after we go over the last few steps. Cool? Yeah, sounds fine. Okay, just follow along, but don't actually do anything from here on. So after five minutes, we'll pull the left throttle into the cutoff position, and after the left hydraulic pressure bleed off, check for full travel and feel of the ailerons, elevators, and the right rudders. After that, shut down the right motor, and job's done. Sounds easy enough. Right on. Hey, good job today, Kermit. I know you knew a lot of this already, but thanks for indulging me. No problem. Thanks for the refresher and teaching me some of the new stuff. I can't wait to get back up and learn the rest. Should be fun. Oh shit, thanks for reminding me. Speaking of fun, I had a special opportunity come my way. As you know, the 4th of July is in just a few days, and the city of Las Vegas asked Nellis to supply some aircraft for a flyover. I like where this is heading. Yeah, so the plan is to launch a couple A-10s around dusk, have them do a nice, low flyby over the strip. McCarran's gonna keep the airspace clear for us, so it should be damn fun, and a pretty special event. If you'd like to fly as my number two for this, let me know, and I'll get you on the schedule. For sure. I'll get back with you in the next day or so on that. Copy. Well, that's it, man. Give it another minute or so, and you're cleared to shut down. Roger. <laughs> 